hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. Hello Stephen Ryan. Hello Matthew Lucas. <laughs> How are you this fine morn? I'm very good indeed. In fact it's a gorgeous day to go somewhere else in the world. And where might that be? Well today I thought we might go to the US of A. Aha! Uh -huh. And? We're going to visit a tree that has special needs. Okay, let's be careful. Yeah. What might its special needs be? Well, it's really about how I'm using it in the garden for the purpose that it's been put. Okay, so, sounds intriguing. Well, let's hope so. Let's go. All right, we're off. Mr. Ryan, what is before us? <laughs> This is a favourite plant of mine. Yes. It's the gold-leafed Indian bean tree. Enormous leaves, um, beautiful leaves. Indian bean tree, otherwise known as? Catelpa bignonioides aurea. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's true. Big nonioides. Yes, yeah, as opposed to a small nonioides. A small nonioides. Well, let's, <laughs> yep. let's leave that. Um, and what was the third part? Aurea. Aurea. Gold. In Gold. Latin. You see, I'm a genius. Yep. Yes, of course you are. Your, your Latin is amazing. So, yeah. hang on. Catelpa. Catelpa bignonioides aurea. Aurea. Yeah. Okay. So the gold-leafed Indian bean tree. And gold it's Indian, Indian as in North American Indian, not as Not in, subcontinental. No. Exactly. So it's a North American tree. It yep. can grow huge. Ah. So to make a really good shade tree in a garden. Yes, uh, I have seen them. And yep. it's a purpley, bunchy flower. That is no, <laughs> What's it, the flower? it's a white flower oh. with purple spots inside. There you, go. you know what I mean. Yeah, and and it often has a little yellowy tongue inside as well. So it has a quite an orchid quality about the flowers. Ah, right, but I right. don't grow this for its flowers. Do you not? No, I grow it for its foliage, and it yes. rarely flowers because I coppice it every year. Ah, coppicing means cutting down new growth. No, cutting down old growth to promote new growth. Yes, and you do it to the same point virtually every year. Yeah. So I go in in the winter, yes. I cut all of the long canes that's produced in the current season now, right back to a stump. Winter meaning beginning or the end of winter? Doesn't Would really you... matter. Doesn't really matter. Is this frost, because let's talk about climate, so yeah. is this frost sensitive? Would you need to wait until yeah. after frosts or? No, do it when you have time to do it. In fact, so that's my adage about most jobs in a garden. You do them when you have time to do <laughs> when them. When you remember. Yes, but any time during the winter would be fine. Yep. So when I've got 10 minutes to spare and I've got my secretaires in hand, yep. I'll come along and do the catelpa. Give it a chop. And the reasoning behind it is so that I don't end up with a huge big shade tree over the border. Yep. I want the gold foliage in the border. Right. So I don't care about the flowers. And this is your blue and yellow border. Yeah, yes. So, you know, I live for... I've got a vulgar purple and yellow border. Yeah, and as I would point out to you, I have the less vulgar the blue less and vulgar. yellow border. So this is doing for you, it's basically a, a sculptural colour moment yeah. in terms of its leaf and foliage and yeah. shape, not the flowers. Yeah, the flowers are quite immaterial. If it flowered, I wouldn't say no, but it probably won't usually flower because I cut it down it's every too year. small. So this is a, a golden leaf, mm. catalpa. I presume then there are others that aren't golden leaf. Exactly. There is the wild form, which is green-leafed, yep. so just straight big nonioides. Uh, there is also a hybrid of it between another species of catelpa called catelpa erubescens purpurescens. Did you just make that up? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, and it's a purple one. to make up Latin names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and purpurea it has purple new leaves. They go greenish as they age, ah. but it's a lovely thing as well. And would you do the same thing with that? Would you coppice yeah. it and use it as a foliage plant? I would. But I'd like to point out purple foliages in my somewhat shady garden tend to disappear into the background quite regularly. Ah. So gold foliages actually work better. Ah, oh, so I love a purple foliage. So do you coppice every year? Yes, you, you have to coppice regularly yep. because otherwise you'll end up with too many big stems That's there. the point of coppicing, I suppose, isn't yeah, it? It is. So yes, every winter I get in there with my secretaires. It's a 10 minute job and it's done. Sounds quite savage though, because it wants to be a tree. It does want to be a tree. But you're not letting it. No, exactly. I take control. Oh, manipulative <laughs> yeah. and controlling. Yeah. The sociopath gardener. <laughs> yes. yes, well, I've said this many times to many people yes. that uh, a, a good garden is always made by a ruthless person. Are you ruthless, Stephen? Yeah. Right? Well, I think I am. I don't think I'm a soppy romantic when it comes to my garden. Aha. Because if something's not functioning, whoosh, off with its head. Oh, brutal, brutal, brutal. Well, some people say to me, oh, but I can't take that out because Auntie Maud gave it to me. And I say, had it ever dawned on you that Auntie Maud might have given it to you because she didn't want it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, a plant has to pay its way. If it's not paying its way, then it should be compost. Off with its head. Oh, okay. So what's its native range? 
It comes from Central North America up to the Canadian border, I think across the border as well. Really? So yeah. it can take cold winters? Oh yes, yes. This is a, a very cold hardy tree. Um, you'll see it grown in gardens in, in England and all over North America. Um, it will grow in the very coldest of climates really. Yeah. So it's quite a hardy tree yeah. and it's surprisingly heat tolerant as well. So I was going to say mm. because here we tend to have the opposite extreme which mm. is temperatures over 40 degrees which is over 105 mm. Fahrenheit, 110 yeah. Fahrenheit, and it can cope with that? Yeah, I don't think when we had those 45 degree days here the year before last, whenever it was, I don't think it even burnt, which is unusual for a gold foliage plant because gold foliages are often more sun sensitive. Mm. They're sort of the rangers of the plant world. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be protected, but uh -huh. this particular plant seems to come through almost anything once it's really? established. I wonder what the biochemistry is of the gold and the sensitivity. I don't know. I'm not mm. sure of that. That's, there's a little homework for there you. Yeah, well, yes. no, not for me, but for someone who cares. Yeah. Can I just say, there is an amazing fragrance here it's not you. <laughs> Funnily enough. What am I smelling? Uh, my giant Mexican tree marigold. Oh my, that is, it's a giant Mexican marigold. Yes. It's beautiful. The, we are surrounded in a cloud of the most... It's very fruity. It's fruity. Mm. Is it, I'm trying to describe Now, whatever it. we describe it as will be what people smell when they smell it. Because smell is very... Suggested. aligned to suggestion ah, uh, oh yes you'd be surprised and I have heard this being described by the scent of passion fruit now I can't yes no yeah. that's what I'm smelling <laughs> that's exactly it well see I don't quite get it no, it's sweet and it's it's passion fruit that is what I'm yeah smelling. well that's the scent that they tell you it smells like so now you know that you won't smell anything else anyway so the giant Mexican marigold yeah um, and it's botanically as we always must put in the botanicals, yes. Tajitis lemoinii. Tajitis lemoinii. Mm. Lemoinii, she sounds like she's from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, well, it does a bit. Uh, and it's obviously named after somebody whose surname was probably Lemon. We'll have to have a look. Yes, we will have to look it up and see what, who, who it was named after. But the marigold genus is a fabulous genus of plants. They often have scented foliage. This yeah. one's probably the premier one. Oh. They're supposedly useful in companion planting. So they are supposed to keep away some pests and bugs in the garden. But You're saying suppose, do you not believe that that's true? Oh, look, I, I think there is some Do you evidence. subscribe to the school of companion planting? Not overly, because I plant things where I need to put them, where it suits me. I don't often bend to my plant's requirements. No, because you're a manipulative sociopath. Yeah, that's right. established that. Yeah, yeah. The scent of it is gorgeous. Uh, I think the only thing I would say to people, if you're going to plant this bush, it grows into quite a decent sized plant, about yeah. a metre and a half each way. Yeah. But don't plant it right at the back of a border because you need to be able to brush past it as you're walking through the garden. Yeah, as we're standing literally in it and yeah. it is just heavenly. Climatically then, it's from Mexico, but Mexico has different climates. Oh, uh, it's slightly frost tender, uh, but seems to come through my frosts. Yeah. It's heat tolerant. Yeah. It is actually mainly winter flowering, funnily enough, if it's not frosted, ah, which makes it very useful. Very useful because yeah. so few things have such vibrant colour in winter. Yeah, so it's wow. mainly winter flowering. Yeah. It does need a good slicing back every so often because it gets leggy and starts yeah. falling apart. So it's probably a short-lived shrub. It's one of those things you'd plant, keep for a few years. Yeah. Even with pruning, it'll eventually get a little bit sort of ratty looking. Yeah. And then you pull it out, start another one, off you go again. It is around the traps a little bit, so mm. it is available from some nurseries, so mm. it's worth asking. Yeah. And I don't mind pushing your local nursery a little bit to do some homework. Asking them to find things for you. Yeah, I, I, ah. I think it's a good challenge. If you've got a nursery person that you actually have bonded to, which yeah. I think is always a good idea yes, because yes, they'll yes, help yes, you more, yes. yeah. but you should also then push their envelope a little bit and say, I want a, an XYZ. Can you Hang see on, if you can get it for me? There's an insect about to eat you. Yeah. Uh, no, I doubt it really, you know. <laughs> Most of my insects are quite benign, okay. I have to say, at least from a human perspective. If you want Tajitis lemoinii, have a talk to your local nursery. I know there's a few wholesalers doing it. Push them. Yes, exactly. You know, get them working a little bit, you know, earn their money. Yeah, perennial question for me with terraces and roof gardens, can it grow in a pot? A good sized pot, temporarily, yes. Uh, I wouldn't so see that's it. As, a no. <laughs> no, no, it's not a no. It's a yes, but with provisos. With caveats. Yeah, yeah. So it has quite a vigorous root system, so it will root bound itself fairly quickly in yeah. a pot. 
You could take it out, root prune it and put it back again uh, and extend its life that way. You would certainly need to have it in a decent sized container so that the roots had room to move out. But I see things in pots as not necessarily all that permanent anyway. I'm, I'm quite happy to have something a little ephemeral so that I can enjoy it when it's in flower. Yeah. And certainly if I've got a small patio or something like that, I might be bored with it after it finishes flowering because it may not look visually all that interesting. Mm. So I might hoik it out and buy another one later and then put something else in its place. So I would be inclined to do those things. Okay. And so, of course, if I had a tiny garden on a terrace, I would have so much time to fiddle. <laughs> you would. Yes. Well, on that note, Mr. Ryan, let us move on. Well, Stephen, that was interesting. Catalpa and that beautiful... Um, the giant Mexican, not giant Mexican, the Mexican <laughs> tree marigold. marigold. The yes, giant Mexican tree, well, it's not giant, but the tree marigold. The fragrance is astounding. Yeah, it is, it is. Now, you did mention, because you know your Latin names like there's no tomorrow, that... Catelpa. No, what's the other one? Uh, Tegetes Lemoniae. Tegetes Lemoniae was inevitably named after someone whose surname was Lemon. And we just discovered... Mm -hmm. The great god Google revealed that it was. It was named after a guy called John Gill Lemon, yes. who was an American botanist in the 19th century. And apparently he, he fought in the Civil War and everything. Goodness me. Yeah. Well, there you go. He found peace in botany. Yes, he did. Have yes. you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, and I have to say, just yes. in passing, yes. if anybody is at all interested, the name Catalpa actually comes from an Indian word, and it's about two heads and apparently the Indians called this plant catalpa because the ah. flower has sort of two sides to it like two heads. Two so, profiles. Oh. Yeah, so it's yet another name that's been pinched from another language and put into our supposedly Latinized botanical names. So Goodness there you go. Me. It is somewhat of a minefield. It is, it, but it's fun and look it's a whole pile of interesting trivia that will be of no use to most people but don't you just love trivia? Do you know I do but like um, John Gill Lemon, yes. who would have ever heard of him? So looking up the history of a plant does actually teach you a little bit about the history of the world. Because of course it does. What were they doing? Why were they looking for plants? And then his biography. It's fascinating. Well, there we go. Mr. Ryan, that was very exciting. I still have the smell of Tajiti's Lemonii Lemonii yeah. over me when I remember it forever. What could we do next week? Well, next week, why don't we go off and visit somebody else's garden maybe? Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Yeah, we could do that. We promised we would do some eye candy. <laughs> and you must always keep a promise, otherwise yeah. you shouldn't make it. Well, do subscribe if you want. We post every week. Hit like if you'd like and leave a question. I won't be able to answer it, but Stephen Ryan will because he's the guru of all things. And we will try anyway. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye all. <laughs>